top. No chaser. Ladies and gentlemen, confidants, welcome to the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. This place was created for those topics that require, well, a little something stronger than just champagne. Over here, we think and drink responsibly. Now, let me give you a disclaimer. Everything discussed in the Hennessy Zone, all of the commentary is based on my opinion and is done so in accordance with the Fair Use Act, which allows for these discussions for the purpose of entertainment and teaching because there's wisdom to be gained from everything, whether it's good or bad. Now, we don't attempt to solve cases over here, but we do discuss them. And I love to hear your opinions about each of the cases we discuss. So please do me a favor and drop in the comments and let me know what you think about today's case. But keep it respectful because the Hennessy Zone is a safe place. The classy drink Hennessy too. And it's interesting, you know, that word respect because it brings us to our story today because when did we lose respect? You know what Rita was talking about when she said R-E-S-P-E-C-T, find out what it means to me. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, take care T-C-B, which means taking care of business for those who didn't know. But when did we stop the business of taking care of each other? When did that go out of business? I remember a time when everybody was everybody's business. The village helped raise your children. If your children acted up in school, they got it in school. If they acted up in the neighborhood, the neighbors dealt with us. When did we lose respect for each other, for each other's space, for each other's lives? When did we lose it? When did we lose our coping skills, the ability to accept a simple no? I don't want you. We see this time and time again, and it's becoming too often. I'm sick of seeing stories like this. When did we become a world where women have to be afraid to tell a man no because they don't know if it will cost them their lives, huh? When? When did we lose our coping skills? Somehow, we've lost the ability to handle the word no. We've lost the ability to handle being rejected because how dare you tell me no, right? How dare you reject all of this? Who do you think you are to say no to me? So now we're dictators, huh? We want to control what people say and what they do. I mean, if we're gonna talk about it, then let's talk. Scoot up for a second. And then we wanna control how everyone responds to us. And if it's not the response we want, we want to choose their fate based on our feelings. We teach people, claim your power, but we don't teach them that power doesn't make you invincible. It doesn't make you all powerful. Power is not free of consequences. Claiming your power does not give you the right to try to exert that power over others. It definitely doesn't give you the right to end someone's life or attempt to just because they told you no. Because this is sick. This story is sick. I keep telling y'all this world has become sick. This world is so sick, bloodthirsty, and violence prone that it is absolutely sickening and disgusting. And the fact that he was not alone in stalking, terrorizing, and unaliving this girl and injuring her sister is insane. It's absolutely in damn sane. They are cowards, all of them, him and his friends with him, egotistical cowards with a fear of rejection. So if you reject me and crush my ego, I have to harm you to show that regardless, I have control over you still. So in order for me to be at the top, it has to be done with someone under my feet. Again, gang, group mentality. All it takes is for one to start egging it on and the others follow suit. And now you feel like you have something to prove. This story is sickening. And it shows you the lengths a coward will go to to protect his already fractured ego. 
And not one person, not one person called the police when this man was kicking at the door. Not one person. Kicking at the door because he now has something to prove. Because his ego has been crushed. His pride took a hit. And that's the problem with some of y'all. You feel you always have something to prove. You want power too bad. And power without maturity is like putting a nine millimeter in the hands of a child. Someone is going to get hurt, including the person holding the gun. Because you can't accept someone doesn't want you. Your swag is leaking so bad that you don't have it in you to pull someone else. So you gotta hurt the person who you feel like hurt you. And where are the friends? Why aren't the friends in custody? You know, the fellow cowards who were with him in this. Because if they were with him when he did this, then they are accomplices to this. They aren't exempt. And where were her friends? Because the witness said that she had friends with her. Did they attempt to help her? Why didn't anyone call the police before it got this far? Oh, I know. Because the police are the problem, right? So let's get into this story because I've stated my opinion on it, but we're going to take a look at the report. And I'd love for you to drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this story. According to NBC News and CBSNews.com, twin 19-year-old sisters were both stabbed in a Brooklyn deli early Sunday leaving one dead and the other receiving treatment in a hospital, according to police and witnesses. Samaya Spain died from a stab wound to her chest, while her sister Sanaya was wounded in an arm, but stable, according to police. Sanaya, the surviving sister, told the New York Daily News on Sunday night that the pair were taking a break from a family games night to get some snacks when the attacker approached them. A witness who did not want to be identified said the twin sisters were attacked because they refused a stranger's advances. So here's the story, and I have to admit I have a few questions. So, according to a witness, one of the guys complimented two girls, walked in with their friends, and they said no, were not attracted, so he called them names. They called him names back, he walked out. He walked down the block angry, the witness said. The man then came back to the deli and things took a turn for the worse. In an account of how she tried to protect her sister, the surviving twin Sanaya stated, she and her sister had taken a break from a family game night and were walking to the Slope Natural Plus on 4th Avenue in Park Slope with their brother around 2.20 a.m. Sunday when a friend pointed out that someone was following Samaya. The surviving twin told the Daily News. I grabbed her phone and was like, come with me, come with me, Sanaya stated. I was like, why are you talking to that boy? She said, I don't want to talk to that boy. Sanaya said to get him off their back, Samaya decided to give her Instagram handle to the man, who relatives told the Post the girls met earlier in the evening at a local club. She said she wasn't going to follow him back, she said. That's it? She said no. At that point, she said the man became enraged. He started to argue with the two teenagers and stormed out of the bodega, but came back just a few minutes later, Sanaya recounted. And this is where some of my questions come into play, because how would he have known exactly where they were in order for him to have been following them and ended up at this bodega? Those would be my questions. How long had he been following them? Where had he been following them from? And how exactly did he know where they were going to be at that moment? Or was this just coincidental that he happened to bump into the girl that he had just got a number from earlier at a club and the friend just happened to see them following them? It just kind of doesn't, like, two plus two doesn't equal four to me. How did he know these girls were going to be here? So the story goes on to say, he pushed little Samaya and then I pushed him, she said. And then everyone else started pushing him out the door. And see, this is where I don't understand why no one called 911. Why didn't anyone call the police 
the minute they saw that this man was harassing these ladies, being threatening and violent toward these ladies, someone should have called 911 before this escalated to the point that it did. But the story says an employee at the store became involved and kicked the drunken man out of the store with his friends. And see, this is what I'm talking about, those cowards that were with him, that were complicit in this, are they gonna be arrested too? And then it says um, that the employee locked the door behind them, according to Sanaya. The twins then got their late night snacks and left the store, only to find the assailant armed with a knife and the door to the bodega locked behind them. He had a knife in his hand and was saying, I'm going to stab y'all in the face, Sanaya recounted. I'm telling everyone to back up. And he pushed little Samaya to the ground. When the assailant started to run at Samaya with the knife in his hand, the girl's older brother intervened, punching him and sending the man to the ground. As I was going to grab Samaya's phone, he stabbed me in the arm, she said. Samaya then asked him to give her her phone back and he stabbed her in the neck. She said, I'm about to faint, Samaya recalled. As soon as she said, I'm about to faint, I called 911. Police found Samaya with stab wounds to her chest and neck and rushed both twins to New York Presbyterian Brooklyn Methodist Hospital where Samaya was later pronounced deceased. This is another part that I really don't understand. So, and this is why I call them cowards as well, because you take a knife and stab the little sister, but you leave the brother unharmed. It, it just does not make any sense. So we have two girls here that you went out of your way to attack, but you left the brother with them untouched. Please make it make sense. And this is the level of cowardice that we have in the world today. That as men, you would rather exert your dominance over females than to stand toe to toe with other men. And you would do it with your friends with you. So your friends, other men, were accomplice to you going after, attacking, harming, and unaliving a female and injuring another. And we're okay with this behavior. We're okay with it. And I have a problem that this is the level that we have descended to as a human race. It's unbelievable to me that a story like this even exists. Sanaya, meanwhile, was treated at a hospital and released. She called her family members after the attack. She said, Granddaddy, Samaya got stabbed and she died, said the victim's grandfather, Alfonso Goodson, 66 years of age. An older sibling, Danasha Goodson, labeled the killer a coward in a social media post. Goodson also warned people not to donate to a GoFundMe that went up for Samaya, saying it was fake. The listing has since been removed. It was said that the pair were thought to have been in the same club as their attacker and an accomplice earlier in the evening before they were followed to the store, which was heaving with late night revelers. As they waited to be served, a friend told Sanaya that a man was talking to her sister. I grabbed her phone and was like, come with me, come with me, Sanaya said. I was like, why are you talking to that boy? She said, I don't want to talk to that boy. Later, the man and his friends followed the sisters to the bodega in Park Slope. According to sources, the assailant was waiting on the girls with two of his friends. At some point in the melee, the assailant had taken Samaya's phone, possibly to follow himself back. And when Sanaya asked for her sister's phone back, he stabbed her in the arm. After the attack, everyone began tending to Samaya's wounds. One of her friends took off their shirts and started putting compression on her neck to try to slow down the bleeding. She was gushing blood all over the street. According to NBCNewYork.com, in an article posted on 3-22-2024, 20-year-old Theo Kelly surrendered to the police. A day after his attorney indicated to the police the man planned to end a nearly week-long manhunt. Cops had been looking for him since the 2.30 a.m. attack Sunday in Park Slope. The guy came out of a party hole down the street 
got very aggressive with one of the girls trying to get some contact information. Chief of Detectives Joseph Kinney said, when they didn't take to his advances, it got verbal. Then it got physical. A witness said Kelly called the women names and stormed off, then returned minutes later. When the twins left the store, the killer then cornered them, according to police. He allegedly pulled out a knife and stabbed Samaya Spain in the chest and neck. She died. Her sister Sanaya was cut in the arm and survived. Law enforcement sources said Kelly was with his attorney when he turned himself over to the police and was being held at the 78th Precinct, just blocks away from the Park Slope Deli where the sisters were stabbed. Friends and loved ones of Samaya Spain gathered outside the precinct to catch a glimpse of Kelly. While the family was happy to see an arrest, a close family friend said it brings little peace to them. No sorry that he is going to say it's going to help this family, said Yvette Ramos. You're never the same. She can't build her child back together. You can't take the ashes and build your child back together. You know what it is to wake up in the morning and not be able to call your daughter like you normally do. That is horrible. A search warrant at Kelly's Hancock Street home yielded clothing believed to be worn during the attack, but the murder weapon has not been found, Kenny stated. He added police have recovered video surveillance from inside the bodega and of a physical encounter in front of it, but they do not have footage of the stabbing itself. Kelly was expected to face a judge on Friday night. It was not immediately clear what charges he may face. Attorney information for him was not available. The case has highlighted the Regional Fugitive Task Force involvement in the search for Kelly, who has prior arrests for robbery. Anyone with information is being asked to call the Crime Stoppers at 1-800-577-TIPS. There has since been an update to this case. Mind you, I recorded this video about a week ago, but due to some recent, a recent tragedy in my life, which I actually did a video about, um, I wasn't able to post this video, but the update is as follows. According to TheGuardian.com, Kelly is charged with the murder of Samaya Spain, 19, and with three additional counts, one for assault and two for criminal possession of a weapon, NBC News reported. And this is where I'm confused, because why wouldn't he be charged with attempted murder? And why is his name the only name that's being reported? Where are the friends that were with him? Because just like he deserves a charge, they do too. They were with him in this. They were there. They didn't attempt to stop it. They didn't attempt to call 911. So they are just as complicit as he is to this heinous crime that has taken place against this young lady and her sister. And against the brother, which they failed not to injure or attempt to injure. You just wanted to go after two females. I don't understand. Was this a gang initiation? Like what would prompt a young man to do this to a woman just because he was rejected? I don't understand. And you did it in the presence of other men that were with you. And y'all were okay with this? Check out this news report of the mom speaking about her two daughters and the substantial amount of pain she's in due to her loss at the hands of this monster. <laughs> her tears run deep after losing her 19-year-old daughter, Samaya Spain. This cell phone video obtained by Pix11 News shows the moment Spain and her twin sister, Sanaya, were brutally attacked. That's Samaya apparently being stabbed in the chest and neck. But we are stopping the video right there. Those were deadly points that he punctured in her body. That even if she fought it, I don't think she could have won the fight. LaShawn Goodson is more than heartbroken, thinking about the death of her daughter. But how she died, Goodson says, makes the pain that much harder. She didn't want to be bothered. Why did she have to die? Because she, you're not who she want to be accompanied by. Walk away. Don't, don't hit on no girl. Don't fight no female. 
no matter what. It all started early Sunday morning. Her twins went to grab food at this deli on St. Mark's Place. A man apparently was trying to hit on the teens. After rejecting his advances, things escalated from there. At one point, the deli owner had to lock the doors to keep the man out. The twins thought the coast was clear, but once they walked out of the deli... My daughter, Sanaya, was arguing with the guy in my daughter's defense outside and he stabbed her and she went to the floor and at that very moment Samaya went to attack him and he stabs her in the heart and when she went down he stabs her in the neck while this mother tries to deal with her grief she sends a message to the person responsible I just want him to suffer every day like I am I want him to wake up every day in a cell just like I gotta wake up every day with my mind in a cell let me just say this before we get out of here. At 2.30 in the morning, at 19 years of age, you should be at home. This is no longer a day and age where you can just hang out all night long and just have a good time. There used to be a day and age for that, but not today. Not in this dec decade, this millennia. People are crazy out here. People are sick. And I get it. This generation is fearless. They, they live by the creed, you only live once. But you also got to remember there's a flip side to that and you only die once too. So more than thinking about enjoying yourself, you got to be thinking about protecting yourself, protecting your life. Think about your destiny and your future because you just may run into an idiot like this with a God complex who wants to decide whether this is the day that he's going to choose whether you live or die. It's not safe. It's not even safe to go in the club anymore. Those are getting shot up. And if you are out, protect yourself. Look out for each other. And make sure you don't have anyone out with you that you can't trust. Because everybody should be watching. This ain't a day and age where you can get so drunk that you can't pay attention to what's going on around you. You better survey your surroundings and make sure you have an exit plan already in place. And be careful not to go to places where you can't establish an exit plan. Because people out here are sick and they're foolish. That's all I have for this one. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this situation. Before we go, why don't you consider becoming a confidant? Kindly hit that like and subscribe button and also the notification bell. So you can be notified when we jump into the Hennessy Zone for another show. Thank you for tuning in to the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. Confidants, raise those glasses. In the sea, in the do. Think and drink responsibly and stay true. Till we speak again. Ta-ta.